<laughs> you can see the color is really intensified and it's got a. Ah! Welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become food. Sorry, someone put a question mark on the teleprompter. Is it supposed to be there? Yes. Today we are making pulled pork stuffed Twinkies. It was inspired by the GMM episode, Regional Fair Foods Across America. There's something called a Twinkie at the State Fair of Texas, right? They take a cornbread Twinkie-shaped thing and they stuff it with chicken chili. I thought I could do it one better, though, because that's a great idea, like a savory Twinkie stuffed with meats. I'm gonna do it with pulled pork. I think the honey and the barbecue sauce is all gonna tie together. And frankly, there need to be more meat stuffed cakes. If you're following along at home, you can snag the time codes right there. They have all the times plus the codes. Let's get cooking. Guys, we gotta solve the question mark thing. It, it's not working for me. We're making pulled pork right now, and making pulled pork at home is super simple. It's just like you're not ever gonna get the actual effect of a real smoker, but you can get some fantastically spiced wet pork in your life, and that's what we're going for at home. It's really delicious. So we're gonna start with a little dry rub. We got a fair amount of kosher salt that we're gonna add brown sugar to, and then you start adding your spices. I don't like to get too complicated with it. A lot of the best barbecues just salt and pepper, but like, <laughs> we're not trying to make the best barbecue. We're trying to make some wet shredded pork to shove into a Twinkie. So I'm gonna add black pepper to that, really coarse ground. You will see there's just a lot of whole peppercorns in that. Didn't mean to do that, but we're rolling with it, it's fine. Then we're gonna take some onion powder. I'm actually omitting garlic from this because I don't really like garlic with the brown sugar. And so I'm gonna do some mustard powder. And then <laughs> we got paprika going in there. This is smoked sweet paprika. Oh yeah, that's cayenne. And then cayenne going in there. I forget what choices I make at some points and then have to put it in my mouth. There's a metaphor in there. If you don't know what something is in life, you're confused about any situation, put it in your mouth. So we got all that salt, sugar, and spices that we're just gonna dust up here. Why am I doing this with a spoon? I wanna do it with my hands. It's easy, the brown sugar clumps up. Use your hands, get in there, get dirty, get intimate with your food, you know? That's what this is about, <laughs> intimacy. I wouldn't know anything about that. So we're gonna take all the spices and we're gonna save a fair amount of this because we're gonna add it to a barbecue sauce later. But you wanna dust it. I'm taking, this is just, uh, this is pig meat is what we're working with. We're using a boneless pork butt, which is the shoulder of the pig, and that is what most pulled pork is going to come from. It's got a really lovely little fat cap on there that we're gonna get all the spices into. All the fat is gonna melt downward because of Newton's law of apples falling or something. And so we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna get this completely covered in that dry rub. This is gonna really mimic that barbecue flavor, especially with the smoked paprika in there. So now you're gonna take your foil and we're covering this because we want to get some kind of like steam action in there. That's gonna lock in. Ah, it's gonna lock in a lot of those juices. So we're gonna cook this for about four hours at 325, covered with tin foil. That's gonna make it super, super tender. All that intramuscular fat is gonna break down. You're just gonna get nice shreddable wet pig meat to put in your Twinkies. And then we're actually gonna take the cover off and then we're gonna blast it like 450 degrees for about 10 minutes to kind of crisp up that fat cap, get a little bit of texture on there. And I'll see you guys in four hours. Let's watch the director's cut of Return of the King. Tithers? What means tithers, precious? So I'm gonna get this on my board. Look how much wet came out of that. That's what I said earlier about this being a delicious wet pork. You can tell it's super tender. Then get it onto the board. Yeah, the fat is just like super gelatinous and kind of fudgy. I use fudgy as a descriptor too much. I feel like people know what that means. Um, and well, I was gonna pull the pork with those forks but then that fell into the pork wet. So give me a sec. I actually prefer chopped pork to pulled pork. There's like two schools of thought in barbecue. Some people go in there and they pull the pork. I like to chop it, so I'm just gonna go to town. Give it a turn. And let's give it a taste. Let's get a little nugget in there. Oh, that is fantastic. It's so tender. And well, Oh, ooh, another little snack. The best bite on it is when you get that like small amount of bark that's on the fat, where all the fat is crisped up from the heat that we blast it on the oven, and then all the spices really like come together inside of that. It's really good. I'm gonna keep dropping it. But we gotta make some barbecue sauce. That was I Dream of Genie. I've never seen the show. Making your own barbecue sauce from scratch, especially if you don't have any on hand, you can generally make it with stuff that you probably have in your pantry. This happened to me once. The barbecue restaurant we get catering from forgot to bring barbecue sauce, so I was a hero, and I made barbecue sauce for the entire office. You're welcome. So I'm just starting with a large brick of brown sugar that has clearly congealed together. That's fine, we're gonna melt it into a bunch of liquid. Barbecue sauce obviously very sweet, so we start with brown sugar, 
Barbie sauce is also very tart. So we're gonna throw in some apple cider vinegar. It's my favorite vinegar to use. So we got the sweet, we got the tart. I like to just go with the kind of general hybridized style. So we're throwing in tomato paste because that is like an ingredient in ketchup, which a lot of barbecue sauces are made from. And then also a lot of yellow mustard. This is commonly used in like a, I think it's Western Carolina style barbecue sauce. So we got like the vinegary, we got the sweet, we got that little bit of like ketchupy tomatoiness. And then we're gonna add in a little bit of spice. We got a lot of black pepper going in. And then we're gonna use that same dry rub that we made from the pork. We're gonna do about a tablespoon and a half of that. And then all you gotta do is stir it up. And then it's barbecue sauce. Oh, I should stir this better. You're not supposed to use a whisk on pans like this, right? Like on a nonstick. But I wanna. All right, so the barbecue sauce is bubbling away. We're gonna let that reduce for about 10 minutes. All the sugars are gonna nice and tighten in the Twinkie tight. Tightened up the, tighten it up. <laughs> oh crap, it went in my nose. <coughs> you ever breathe in boiling vinegar? <coughs> God! You can see the color is really intensified. It has got a, ah! We're gonna take all of our pulled pork. I'm like legit crying right now. Not pulled pork, we're taking all of our machete hacked pork and we're gonna put it in the bowl right there. Well, maybe not all of it because the bowl's too small. We'll figure that out. We're gonna take a lot of our pork and we're gonna get a lot of it on the table. Scooby snacks. That was more Tim Allen from Home Improvement. And then we're gonna pour a lot of that delicious barbecue sauce right on there. Since we're gonna take all this pork and stuff it into the Twinkie batter as it bakes, I wanna give the pork a chance to like really set up with the sauce. And then when we bake it, all that's gonna perfume through this kind of like honey cornbread cake, but it's gonna be in the shape of a Twinkie. All the best foods are shaped for like perfect insertion right into the mouth. You know, like popsicles, hot dogs, really thin burritos. Twinkies, and so I think this is gonna be really fantastic. Let's give the pork a try. That's one of the wettest porks I've ever had. Let's make some Twinkies. So what we're gonna do is combine the dry ingredients. We got normal white flour, and then we got our yellow cornmeal going in there. That's what makes it cornbread. Why did I have to, I don't have to explain that. Then we're gonna take a little bit of baking powder, and then we're gonna add in sugar, a little pinch of salt, well, I was gonna salt bay it, and then I was like, what is this, nine months ago? No, no one cares about that guy anymore. He's doing fine. So we're just gonna whisk together our dry ingredients, and then we're gonna get our wet ingredients together. So we're gonna go three eggs. You notice I'm using, oh. God. Crack three eggs in there, and then we're gonna drop in a cup of milk. A lot of people use buttermilk when it comes to cornbread. I uh, got good and I couldn't find any. And then you're gonna use the same whisk that you whisk your dry ingredients with. Also, if you don't have a Twinkie pan to make the pulled pork Twinkies, use a muffin tin. Like some savory pulled pork filled corn muffins are gonna be really delicious. And now we're gonna dump in butter, give that a little whisk. And then while you're whisking the butter, pour in about a quarter cup of honey. You gotta be extremely athletic to do this. I don't know if you guys know this, but I was JV basketball most improved player 2008. So shout out coach Ennis Augustus. You got me there, man. Eh, cornbread batter is done. Now, we have our Twinkie pan right here that I'm just gonna go ahead and grease up with Pam, AKA food lube, get some of the hair. And now we are going to take just a smidgen. If you are doing pulled pork muffins, same rule applies. You wanna get just a thin layer of batter and then you're gonna tuck the pork into that thin layer of batter and then you're gonna put a thick layer of batter over top before you bake it. Because even if you fill it up halfway, all that batter is gonna expand and rise and it's gonna uh, push your pork to the top the way a breached porpoise pushes to the top of its mother's womb. I keep bringing up breached porpoise birthing because I think it's a universal reference that everyone gets. All right, so we're getting a thin layer of batter in each one of these. And then we're just gonna tuck in nice thick chunks of pork. Yeah, nice thick pork chunks. You want it to stay in roughly the center and tuck it in the batter and keep it away from the sides because we want full Twinkie coverage in there. So we're just gonna tuck the nice pork meats. <laughs> I have a fork in there like I'm gonna use it, nah. And remember, that this is gonna rise a lot. So you only wanna fill this about three quarters of the way. All right, so we got the pork filled up and now we're gonna drizzle a fair amount of batter over the top of that. We wanna fill this about two thirds of the way up because it's gonna rise and then we're probably gonna have to shave it down regardless to give it its signature Twinkie shape. Uh, we made a little bit of mess. Just use your fingers to kind of, do you get some, there we go. You're gonna put it in the oven at 375 degrees if what that says is true for about 20 to 25 minutes and then it should be Twinkies. These are looking gorgeous and nice steaminess. They are golden brown. Now what we gotta do, how do I get them out? You just, ow, you just grab them? Ow. Okay, I'm just gonna do this. On three, one, two, how do you do? Ah, 
All right, so we got Twinkies. Now, you'll notice they're a little misshapen. We got like a little curve on the bottom, so I'm gonna trim that off a little bit. I really want them to like sit nice and tight like Twinkies, but if you got muffins, like that's a perfect little muffin top. It's a good cornbread. It's not that dry. It's, I have dry mouth. When we're filming, I don't like to inconvenience people and go to the bathroom, so I don't drink anything throughout the whole day. It puts your body on notice and gives you an adrenaline rush because it's like water levels depleting. You've eaten a lot of salt. I'm just gonna trim off the caps and then I'm gonna eat each and every one. When you got these leftovers, you could add them to a soup. My dog loves eating cornbread. That's what Rachel Ray would do anytime there was a silence and she was top chopping onion. She'd just be like, my dog loves eating people food. Oh my God, he is just so intuitive. He can open doors. My dog learned how to wipe himself. I just love him so much. You can fill up an entire episode of a Food Network show just talking about your dog. And now, Rachel Ray makes dog food. I've tasted it, it tastes nothing like dog. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm, a, I'm just gonna break it open. Look at that. When's the last time you broke open a Twinkie and you got a big old chunk of pig meat, huh? It's happened to me a couple times to threaten to sue hostess. <laughs> All right, and now to give you the most intimate experience in my mouth possible, spork care. <laughs> so we're just gonna dive right into this Twinkie. Let's spork her open. There's a nice chunk of meat. Get it on there, and then we're just gonna take a little bath in the sauce. <laughs> Get it nice and covered. And now, <laughs> Choo Choo Train's coming in. <laughs> the first thing that you get is that barbecue sauce, which is so heavily spiced. There's so much black pepper in there, which is fantastic, because the corn cake is very, very sweet. The pork is very fatty. This is honestly really fantastic. It almost eats like a Chinese dim sum dumpling, except you get all the flavors of pulled pork and cornbread. It's a fantastic idea and an easily insertable shape. This is really fantastic. The recipe is killer. You're the best. Thank you so much for watching Mythical Kitchen. Leave a comment with what mythical dishes you want to see us cook next. Hit us up on Instagram at Mythical Kitchen with hashtag dreams become food. Pictures of your dishes. We got new videos out every week. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'll see you later. Get as messy as you want in your own kitchen when you have the Mythical Kitchen Towel, available now at mythical.com.